Um, so first I'd like to say hello and thanks for inviting me uh, to speak about the Bureau of Reclamation's uh, funding opportunities uh, with regard to invasive species. Uh, I've been in the Pacific Northwest for four years now. I came from the lower Colorado region where quagga mussels are an existing issue. And uh, I got bachelor's degree uh, from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas uh, with um, restoration ecology and my master's in uh, uh, public health with environmental and occupational health being uh, the primary focuses. Uh, so as a former vet, I definitely appreciate uh, the, def the opportunities of working with the government and what it has to offer. And uh, I, it's opened up a lot of opportunities for me to work with so many great state partners as well as tribal partners, uh, especially since I've been up in this region. So I'm going to talk about these funding opportunities, um, and if anybody, I, this is a new thing for me, I added some QR codes for anybody that wants to scan and look at uh, some web uh, content with more resources, um, I'll have a few of these. Uh, this code will take you to the Reclamation uh, Invasive Muscles webpage that has information uh, about current projects and opportunities. Uh, so I'm gonna go over uh, what our funding uh, looks like, as well as how our FY23 projects are laying out, and then also discuss uh, briefly our water smart grants. So in 22, FY22, uh, we had 22 projects reclamation wide that were awarded with seven of those going to the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we had $2.7 million and our region received $1.2 million, which primarily goes uh, to our state and tribal partners uh, and some you know, like reclamation irrigation districts uh, will receive some funding occasionally, but a good chunk goes to our state and tribal partners. Uh, for FY23, uh, we had 31 individual submissions uh, and they totaled over $4.8 million. And that's just, these are projects are just for quagga and zebra mussel work. So there is a lot of focus on uh, reclamation and the prevention of mussels getting into uh, waters in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, 19 projects out of the 31 were selected for funding, seven of those coming to our region. Uh, and that totaled about $2.6 million, and our total funding was about $682,000, which is less than we've received in the past, but there was a significant effort in uh, our Great Plains region, particularly South Dakota, to try to uh, do some of the uh, control measures in South Dakota. So a quick snapshot of the projects that we are currently working on funding. So the Spokane Tribe uh, is going to be doing some early detection and monitoring in Lake Roosevelt. Uh, our regional laboratory that we have in, based out of Boise is going to be doing some additional monitoring work, uh, hitting more of our reservoirs for monitoring. So they uh, they received a little bit of funding to help out with that. Um, the Colville tribes uh, are receiving uh, more funding this year than in the past to continue their efforts of monitoring, as well as do some training and decon. Uh, so this is, I think, four years we've been uh, funding Colville's uh, early detection and monitoring program. Uh, Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks is going to be doing a watercraft inspection station enhancements uh, on the Columbia River Basin side. Grand Teton National Park, which is a headwater to the Columbia Basin, is going to be doing some prevention activities, increasing their inspections uh, coming in and out of the park. And the Shoshone Paiute tribes uh, with the Duck Valley Indian Reservation uh, getting a boat wash station. And lastly, our Upper Columbia Conservation Commission is doing prevention activities, which uh, typically has been outreach for uh, communities uh, and receiving materials to help uh, uh, reach more people. 
So this is just a uh, looks at what our funding has gone to in the past. So we've got our different categories, including early detection, prevention, education and outreach, rapid response, which we funded uh, Washington uh, for increasing capacity. And so you can see the where most of our funding has focused on in our region is prevention because we want to prevent mussels from entering our waters. So looking at uh, FY24, and I know a lot of our partners have asked uh, about this next coming year. So here it is. I just received this information last week. So the pre president's budget has proposed another $2.6 million. Uh, the call for proposals will uh, I'll send out to anybody I have contact information for will come out in July. So if I don't have your information, you've not received any requests for proposals from me in the past, uh, shoot me an email, which I'll provide at the end of uh, this presentation so I can add you to my contact list. Um, <clears throat> the proposals, it usually asks for about four weeks back uh, for these proposals, um, and they're submitted to our Denver headquarters office. And that'll be done during August and September. There's a committee that reviews them. Now, this is not put forward in the grants.gov. This is a, a completely separate process from grants.gov, even though the funding uh, is done through grants.gov. This is done on the back end. So you won't see an announcement. It'll come uh, from me or from our Denver office. Uh, the Anticipation is October selection. Once the, the committee reviews and selects the projects that they recommend for funding, it goes all the way up to the commissioner of reclamation uh, and they sign off on uh, approving the ones that they've uh, been recommended. And then hopefully a November announcement uh, and those that have received funds from me before know that we move at the speed of government uh, and we are typically always in a continuing resolution mm, four to five months uh, into the fiscal year, which delays our project funding. So uh, even if we say November, it is definitely still months down the road before we get uh, the projects fully awarded. So um, we do our best to try to get the funding out, but it does take some time. So this QR code will take you to our WaterSmart page. Uh, and th this is additional sources. Uh, the quagga mussel specific uh, funding does not have a match requirement uh, for those that are receiving funding. WaterSmart does. So this is all done out of our headquarters office in Denver. There are water and energy efficiency grants. There's small scale water efficiency uh, projects and there's water marketing strategy grants. And I uh, there is a current grant opportunity, which this QR code will take you directly to the grants.gov uh, grant opportunity. Uh, and it is water smart aquatic ecosystem restoration projects uh, for FY23. And those proposals are due June 1st of this year. So if you have a proposal for uh, a water restoration, some kind of ecosystem, uh, something that came to mind was uh, like salmon recovery efforts, maybe uh, with the flowering rush removal and trying to improve habitat ecosystems uh, for native uh, fish. So there, there's ways that uh, you can do that, but it does require a match to be provided. And that's all I have uh, for this afternoon. Uh, like I said, there's my email. Um, I am in the office, but I'm on my cell phone more often, so I provide everybody my cell. Um, I do email and text uh, much more frequently because I am busy and in the field a lot. So if anybody needs to reach me, has questions, uh, feel free to reach out. <laughs>